and we're live. What is going on, CAG family? I, don't know I have no I... idea if we can see comments or not. This is comments will appear here. We're probably early. It's eight o'clock. Looks like people are on. I see people in the corner. There's a heart. All right, we're getting some hellos. We are the least tech savvy millennials of all the millennials. I do play the guitar a little bit. I should be way better for how long I've been playing it, that's for sure. What's going on, Phil? I see Kelly on. Susan. Chris, what's going on, buddy? Some other announcement. Hello. Who's excited for night of worship on Friday night? There was some other church announcement that I was going to make sure I put out, and I don't remember what it was. We're almost to the end of our 21 days in fasting. Hope everybody is going strong. Joe says the men's man. I'm apparently the men's man. Hmm. I'll plug it at the end as well. We're still kind of getting people on here. But um, again, we got night of worship on Friday. And then shout out to all of my men's group guys. Or oh. men's circle. Sorry, men's circle. Uh, still going strong with that. Other, uh, other circle groups, they took a break. We didn't. We kept on trucking. So every Monday night at 6.30 in the, the uh, what do we call that? The community room back behind, in the back, back side of the church. Oh, they got rehearsal going on right now. Man. And if you guys have not seen the sanctuary, Big surprise coming Friday night. Oh, Ambrosia is still going, going strong through. too. Right. Yep, yep. Ambrosia is, I think, Saturday mornings at Evelyn Bay, if I remember correctly. Mm hmm. I'd say if you're not plugged into a small group, it's definitely something you should look into. Helps you get connected. Absolutely, we love ours. We love our, our Mowers, Mowers small group. Circle, circle, not small group. It's still, it's life group to me. I That's what, that when, when we first started going to church, 10 years ago or whatever it was. That's what our old church called it, was life groups, and that's what it will always be, is life groups. Sorry, Pastor Shane. All right, well, it is 8.05 on my watch, so I think we should probably jump into it, get going. Um, so before we pray in and all that, 
So we ended up, if you guys tried getting on last night, we had a pretty amazing uh, prayer meeting going on. And uh, Pastor Shane kind of made the executive pastor call and uh, that, that we should let the Holy Spirit do, do his thing. And uh, we continued on praying instead of uh, taking a break and doing doing our uh, devotional. So we're actually going to be covering down on John 18 and 19 tonight. A lot going on in 18 and 19. We're going to do our best to get through it. And we'll probably hit, miss some hit stuff. Some wave tops. But... There's, yeah, there's a, there's a ton going on. It's it's you could spend weeks just in these two these two chapters. So, uh, do you want to pray us in, and I'll pray us out. Sure. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for everybody jumping on, and I just pray for everybody's 21 days of prayer and fasting that they would continue to hold strong during these last few days and that you would just provide such breakthrough um, coming out of this fast and that we would all just have such a new hunger for you. I just ask that you would bless our words and bless this time. And we love you so much and we praise you for all that you do. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm going to kind of start us off in chapter 18. Um, I feel like reading chapter 18, it really just kind of, you know, hit me in a new light. Um, so in verses one through six, um, it is the beginning of it all. And Judas has gone to the Pharisees and gotten this team to come with him. So in the beginning, as he was about, um, as Jesus was about to be arrested, they believe he could see the um, group of soldiers coming. And in one uh, commentary that we had found or Bible study that we had found, they had estimated that that was between 800 and 1,000 soldiers. and Mixed between the soldiers and the priests and Pharisees. and. Um, but the thing that really stood out to me in that is that Jesus initiated contact with them. And he walks up to this giant group that is there, he knows, to arrest him. And he says in verse 4, who are you looking for? And they answer him saying, Jesus, the Nazarene. And Jesus replies with, I am he. And verse 6 is what really stu stood out to me. Is, and it says, as Jesus said, I am he. They all drew back and fell to the ground. And that just um, really demonstrates his great and divine power. With three little words, he was able to put 800 people on the ground. Um, and this is a great example of his power. Um, and then it also just shows, like, as the scripture goes on to read... His willingness to surrender to being arrested um, and that he was willing to surrender his divine power, his ability to walk away from the arrest and um, just his willingness to go with them because he knew God's greater plan, greater plan. And he also in verse eight uh, secures the free escape for his disciples, making sure that they are not going to be caught in the crosshairs of any of the fighting. If any of my guys are on from, from last year, we, we talked a lot about servant leadership. And I think that's just a, another example that Jesus gave us of that servant leadership. Like, Hey, do it, do what you want with, with me, but uh, just leave, leave my disciples. Just, just a, Obviously, it's Jesus, so he's a pretty awesome leader. But <clears throat> um, so over the last, whatever, 19, 18 days, just be, yeah. Um, reading through John this time, for whatever reason, I spent a lot of time uh, 
really thinking about the disciples and kind of putting myself in their shoes. It really started, I guess, probably three ish weeks ago. Um, during men's circle, we, I was, I was reading through some commentary and it actually put like a, Hey, this is roughly six days, um, before Jesus was crucified and kind of what was going on at that time. But that like, I don't know, it really, it made it more human to me and got me thinking about like, man, can you imagine like spending all this time with like your best friend and knowing he keeps saying like, Hey, where I'm going, you can't go and I'll be gone soon and all this. And just that, the sadness that, that the disciples had to kind of have going in this, like, man, where's, where's he going? He's, this is, he's, he's my best friend. But anyway, so reading through 18 and 19, um, Peter kind of stuck out to me and in verse, so Peter having a sword drew it back and uh, struck a high priest servant and cut off his right ear. Uh, so for Peter to literally with an army staring him down, take his sword out and cut off this servant's ear to me, that really puts action behind kind of what he, what the conversation was. If we go back to, to uh, chapter 13, chapter 13 uh, when uh, where'd it go? I had it all marked I and then said, I wandered off. He just denies that he would ever deny Jesus yeah. in chapter 13. So in 13 verse 37, Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. So yes, Peter will go on to deny Jesus three times, but uh, we talked about this a little bit Monday at Men's Circle, um, that we don't think it was really malicious. It was more self-preservation. And it kind of got me thinking a little bit more over the last couple of days about how how often we unintentionally deny Jesus. And we don't mean it maliciously. And, that, you know, absolutely we we love Jesus, but how often do we inadvertently deny him when we're with our loved ones or, you know, that are non-believers or at work around people that are non-believers and we keep quiet when maybe we shouldn't have, uh, really we're, we're kind of denying Jesus in that, in that moment. Um, and being a military guy, we're a pretty rough and rowdy bunch. And I can, I can tell you that there's times that, that I, that I fall into that. Uh, so going, going in between chapter 18 and 19, um, did you have anything else with that lace? We're, it's bedtime with the kids. We got kids running around, dogs running around. So it's uh, life. So going in between chapter 18 and 19, um, it also stood out to me that Pilot three times, yeah. um, said, said that, that he said he's, that I find no guilt in him, uh, talking about Jesus. And so it just kind of made me think of, uh, you know, it's just stating again that he was the perfect spotless lamb uh, that would be sacrificed for, for us. Um, and then also the uh, number three signifying completeness uh, so that this is not just completing the, the, uh, prophecy and completing Jesus's work, but it's, it's completing kind of that, I guess, really the, that chapter, uh, <laughs> but, uh, so three also being a, associated with the Trinity kind of got me thinking about how that could relate and that it wasn't just that Pilate couldn't find any guilt in Jesus, but there, he, he had no guilt maybe in the Holy Spirit, couldn't find guilt with God himself. Um, and that also kind of got me thinking about how Pilate was pretty convinced that he didn't want to crucify Jesus. And 
that maybe that was more of a Holy Spirit led uh, decision to, to finally hand him over. Um, not just to fulfill the prophecy, but in the end to, to save us and to fill the promise that God really made to us, right? That, no, I won't go down that road. Uh, yeah, so that's what I got on that. Do you have anything? I don't think so. No? All right. Mm -mm. So also rolling into 19, um, it's pretty, pretty different from the other gospels when it comes to recording the crucifixion. Uh, so Jesus wasn't really interested in recording a blow by blow account of all the, uh, the trials. Uh, he didn't really get into. He didn't really talk matter. about the um, other two men that were yep, next to him on the crosses. I thought that was something that kind of stood out. Uh, there's no darkness. There's no veil being torn, no earthquakes, no graves opening. Um, John didn't even tell how long Jesus was on the cross. Instead, John seemed to more be propelled to tell uh, people about who Jesus was as a person and uh really that Jesus was God and that he came for the purpose of, of bearing the sin of, of all of us, um, on, on that cross. And also the, the many different references to it being Passover and how the crucifixion yeah. was speedy. Um, the sentencing was speedy, everything they were trying to speed up to get to the Passover, which kind of leads into I feel like God being or Jesus being the perfect lamb that was sacrificed. Where's all your notes go? Oh, um, they're kind of disappearing because I can't have my seat. <laughs> Let's see. So now we got one note left. We did pretty good at it. Yeah, I was gonna say my my chapter nineteen is just really a lot to take in and like overall it's like I really can't imagine being in Pilate's uh, spot especially in verse what is it here verse 10 so chapter 19 verse 10 I just kind of uh, got a little bit of a chuckle out of this because Pilate is talking to Jesus and says why don't you talk to me Pilate demanded don't you realize that I have the power to release you or crucify you? And then Jesus said, you would have no power over me at all unless it were given to you from above. So the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. So I feel like Jesus had to chuckle a little bit there. Like, yeah, you're not really the one with the authority over me. And... Um, it also just, I like that Kelly led me into what she say. I believe his eyes were blinded. So yeah. God's plan would be fulfilled. That's what I kept feeling reading both chapter 18 and 19. Like my prayer was really just Jesus, please don't ever let my eyes be that blind or my heart to be that hard that I can't see you working and moving and, um, just be able to see you. I mean, that would just break my heart. Um, but I feel uh, in reading one of my Bible studies, it talks about how Pilate also just did not have the courage, enough courage to stand for truth against all the opposition from the Pharisees and the Jews and whatnot. But again, that's because it had to be God's plan. Um, and then again, reading through the different, uh, all the things that Jesus went through and how each step is so very intentional and really shows how detail oriented our God is in each, all the different Old Testament prophecies that were for, were fulfilled. Um, the one that really stood out to me was in the Psalms. What did I just say? 60. 
921, I think it was, with the hyssop. And, oh, I have it open right here. There we go. So, 69.21 says, they gave me poison for food, and for my thirst, they gave me sour wine to drink. Um, so, I just love the connection between the Old Testament and the New Testament and finding that stuff. It's kind of mind-blowing for me. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's really all I have. So what do you have? What's your last note? So the last note I had was, uh, how, do you spell, how do you say that name, that guy's name? Robert, Robert Mounts? Yeah, that's what I'd say. Some guy, some guy pointed out, uh, <laughs> um, because the fall of the first Adam took place in a garden, in Genesis 3. It is fitting that the redemption of the human race be the second Adam, or by the second Adam, uh, takes place in a garden as well. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden. And that's at the end of verse, or at the end of chapter 19. Um, verse 42, I think. Uh, this refer this references Romans. I, oh, because I was in John twenty, I think. No, I just read it. But yeah, either, yeah. either way, um, again, just God making that that full circle. That the the first Adam and the fall of man was was in a garden, and then the the second Adam. To, to be sacrificed, sacrificed and crucified in a garden. But I think that forty-one. That is all I got. What do you got? I think that's it. There's a. We did skip over a couple things, but there, there again, ton, there's, uh, there's so a ton much. of material in, in eighteen and nineteen that we could. Uh, we could have spent a long time digging digging into that. Um, and just lack of better terms, I guess, how amazing it all was. Yeah, truly my Bible study for these two chapters, it's five weeks of lessons. Yeah. So <laughs> I think the men's one is about the same. Condensing too. it down into about 20 minutes. I think we did okay. Uh, but yeah, just continue to finish out this fast, listen to the Holy Spirit, and you want to pray us out? Absolutely. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for, for saving us, God, for sending your son as the perfect lamb to, to be crucified for us, for our sins, for even though we, we don't feel we deserve it, and we, we we don't deserve it, Lord, but but you still you still send him, and you still forgave us, and you continue to forgive us every time we come back to you, Lord. Whenever we drift, you're there, you're always there, God. And it is it's so incredible to me the way that you love us, God. And help us to all be a little bit of a example of of the life that you want us to live and. And the, the example that you gave us through your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. God, I, I, I thank you for our CAG family. I thank you for Pastor Shane. I thank you for Pastor Robin, and the, the guidance and mentorship that they provide so many of us, Lord. I, I love you, and I, I just I thank you, and I praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. See you all Friday at a time. <laughs> A time. Seven. Worship night. Worship night. It's on. Check it on Facebook. Some, somebody will say it. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody no, got the time got Friday? All They're right. all in rehearsal right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Right. Thank you. Love you guys. Have a great night. Seven. I don't know how to turn.